Hello and thanks for joining me for some more photography. Now, I know it's been two or three months since my last video. And to those of you that have written in and said, we haven't heard from you in a while, are you okay? Uh, yes, I'm absolutely fine. And thank you so much for taking the time to write in. Now, my YouTube channel is very much a sideline to my many and varied business interests. And as it happens over the last couple of months, I've been engaged to do commercial photo and video work. So that really has to take precedence and the YouTube channel rather goes on the back burner. Well, that's all water under the bridge now, and hopefully I'll be back to getting some videos out to you on a much more regular basis. Now, of course, my photography still goes on on a personal level, most of which involves dog walking down at the local beach. Uh, so let's just have a quick look over one or two images that I've captured over the last couple of months that I'm reasonably happy with. So this first image is one which I've actually been trying to get for quite some time. And a couple of months ago, I managed to catch it in some great light at perfect tidal conditions. This next image is taken uh, about a week or so after midsummer. High water, late evening at Kemai Spey in the northern part of Anglesey. Now this next one is another dog walk at Aberfrau, and the reason I quite like this one is it's something that is actually quite difficult to achieve. And it was a howling gale, which was why I wanted the shot, because there was lots of movement in the water. So I was quite chuffed that I was able to, between me and the camera, get a shutter speed of one second handheld. And this last one is from a couple of weeks ago, uh, just after uh, the first named storm of the season had blown through. And the reason I quite like this is because I've got the pristine sand of the beach uh, after an overnight high tide and I had the sun over my left shoulder illuminating the beach and the rocky outcrop which gives me a really nice contrast with the dramatic clouds from the squall and the rain falling over the Irish Sea and the mainland. So a couple of images there I'm pretty happy with. Uh, last time I spoke to you, I was heading off a mountain ridge down to my car. And when I got there, I found that uh, the whole side of it had been smashed in. A farmer had reversed his truck into it uh, and it was in the middle of nowhere. And to be fair, he'd left his details under the windscreen wiper. He ended up writing me out a check for the cost of the repairs, which was very decent of him because he didn't need to. I'd have had no idea who'd done it. Anyway, around about that time, completely coincidentally, and I've been mulling this over for a couple of years now, I happened across a little uh, van that was for sale quite local to me and I went and took a look at it. Uh, I decided to go for it and I thought you might just like to have a little look around it. So the van's been parked up in my yard ever since I got it, which is about eight weeks now. As I mentioned, I can't actually put it on the road for the moment. Uh, it's a 2010 Renault Kangoo X Works van. Uh, 1.5 diesel, that's all I know. Uh, there are lots of variants, I don't care which one it is. Uh, one thing worth noting though, it doesn't have a sliding side door and that was something specifically that I didn't want because I knew I was going to use both sides of the van internally and so I didn't need a sliding side door and it's just one less door lock to worry about for security purposes and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to jump straight in the back and show you what it's about. Um, what I have got here, this bracket underneath the door handle, is a bracket that I can attach a reversing camera to. Uh, so that's going to come in handy. The key thing with that is it's wireless. I didn't want to be faffing about running wires through the van. Cheap Chinese knockoff off of Amazon. Uh, but it's pretty good. Comes with a nice little screen so I can see what's going on at the back of the van from, from the driving seat. Uh, but then also, I'm not going to attach the screen permanently. So, you know, if I hear some noise outside the van in a, a dodgy Snowdonia lay-by, uh, I can have a look and see what's going on. Um, so, standard barn doors. Uh, and these actually do uh, extend right round, but I'm not going to today because I haven't got enough room in the yard and it's a bit breezy. So let's just jump in and show you round. Um, one thing that some people have noted, and this is something I hadn't seen before, is that it's got this kind of sunroof thing that will open up and slide forward. So you're opening up this entire rear part of the van. That's going to be really useful. Um, pure luck. I mean, it wasn't that I was looking for that sort of thing. 
Uh, I think it's so that because you've got this crossbar here, you can carry longer loads because it's a short wheelbase, of course. Um, I'm going to drop that back down and get inside because it's quite blustery today. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's quite a handy thing. I haven't done any electrics on the van at all. Everything is just USB. So that I've got a couple of these little USB lights. They'll just magnet onto anything. You can see that I've carpeted the van. Uh, so it's all insulated and carpeted. I haven't done any tongue and groove lining or any rubbish like that. And that's quite deliberate because why do you want to carry a load of wood around with you? Um, you know, it's not a home from home. It's a, a metal tent on wheels that puts me in the right spot for more interesting photography. And that's, that's all I wanted it for. Um, however, if I take it for any extended trips, it was important that I can work in here because I do need a sort of laptop station, so to speak. So you'll see what I've done about that in a moment. Now, another thing that's worth noting about pointless weight, you'll see I've just left all the cabinets open, uh, under the bed is all open. And that's because I thought, well, what's the point in, in putting cupboard doors on? They just get in the way uh, and they're extra weight that I don't need. Also, under the bed, you know, there was no point putting fancy drawers under the bed because I can just as easy lift it up. Uh, I've set it up so I can lift the entire bed frame up and get under the legs. You'll see there I've got uh, a flexible solar panel. Uh, now, the eagle-eyed amongst you will note that it's not going to get me much juice under there. The thing is, I thought about sticking it on the roof of the van and that's why I ordered a flexible one because uh, I wanted to be stealthy. But um, I just thought, well, actually, I don't need it to be permanently stuck on a van. And if I ever get rid of it, it's going to be much easier just to keep my own panel. Um, I can just lean it up against the side of the van if I want to top up my power bank. But the power bank uh, will top up from the cigar lighter when I'm driving. So I, my power requirements are very limited. As you saw, I haven't wired the van up at all. I haven't got a water pump or any rubbish like that. So uh, I'll, I'll show you in a moment how I've got it set up. One big advantage that I have over a lot of people is I'm a total short ass. So it means I've got plenty of headroom. Uh, I'm not interested in some kind of high top van and being able to stand up and walk around. That's, that's not the point of it. Uh, so I've got the bed going along the one side. So of course it doubles as somewhere to sit. Uh, I did try it uh, across the van. So I'd have more room here in the front area. But actually I found that even though I could just about lie across the van, uh, it was it was a bit tight. So I thought, no, I'll just put it all the way down the one side. So uh, standard sort of thing. I've extended the shelf above the driver's uh, area back to here so that I've got loads of room. Uh, I've carpeted it all out. Um, I saw some videos where people were spending days on their carpeting so they wouldn't have any wrinkles at all. I don't care about wrinkles. The whole point of the carpet is to make it cozy and warm to uh, cover any bare metal so I don't get condensation issues. And that's it. I've got, it's got nothing to do with aesthetics. So let me show you. You can see there how little I care about wrinkles in my carpeting. So under the worktop, I've got a cheap Chinese knockoff 12 volt fridge, which uh, is plenty big enough for quite a few days. That'll do nicely. Uh, plenty of room here in the front, just behind the passenger seat to hang stuff up, keep my backpacks. And of course, I'm keeping all my camping gear in here. So it's here if I need it. And then the only sort of uh, nod to any kind of furniture building is this kind of drop down table thing. Uh, so in front of me, I've got my power bank. This is the EcoFlow River 2, which uh, is 268 watt hours. It's got a built in inverter so I can run my laptop, uh, lots of USB and a DC 12 volt out, which is really handy. Uh, so I can park my laptop on the desk here and I've got plenty of scope for doing a bit of work, doing a bit of processing uh, and uh, sitting and looking at the view and all that sort of thing. 
uh, water supply is this little 10 litre thing. It's quite handy because of the shape of it. And what I've done is I've put fiddles along all of my shelving so these won't slide off. And then as you can see, it's got a spigot at the end and that allows me to easily fill up my pots and pans. Now, there's actually very little to think about as far as putting this van build together goes. So when I want to cook, I've got this area towards the back of the van which allows me to crack the roof bit open and as I said this will slide all the way forward and, and I, you know if I wanted a bit of privacy I can close the barn doors at the back but I can still have the roof open. So in front of me I've got this cooking area, I drop the table and I've got a kind of L-shaped kitchen and one of the beefs about uh, camper vans very often is that there isn't much countertop room and I know from how I spread all my crap out inside tents that I need plenty of room to spread all my crap out. Especially when I'm charging a load of batteries and doing some processing and making a cup of coffee at the same time. So uh, I decided not to bother with a built-in sink. I mean, I just thought that would be a total waste of time. So I just got myself this little foldable bowl and pop that out. And I've got a sink, but it's not in a permanent place, keeping a hole in my worktop. And the same goes for things like cooking. You know, I've got a couple of camping stoves that I use anyway, so why would I buy another stove just to go in the van? Um, so that can just sit anywhere around here and be boiling water for coffee. And then, as I said, I've got my water supply really handy. So all in all, uh, move that away, do that again. So all in all, you know, I'm really happy with it. It is literally just a bed on wheels with one or two home comforts. And then one last thing that probably is worth mentioning. Um, it's all very well at three o'clock in the morning when you're in a tent on a ridge and you're an old bloke like me who has to go to the loo pretty regularly to just pop out of the tent. It may not be quite that feasible if I'm parked up somewhere. So I actually have equipped myself with an emergency Thetford loo, which just sits down here behind the seat. Now I don't intend to use it much, <laughs> hopefully at all, uh, but I have checked it out. I, I don't have to do any major jiggery pokery to get into position. Uh, so it, it, when I was building this cabinet here, and I was measuring it up, I hadn't thought that I wouldn't have any room to... Anyway, you get the picture. I, I can make use of the facilities without any problem at all, but hopefully I won't need to. So there we are. Um, that's it. I mean, that's, that's the van. Uh, hopefully I'll get it on the road one day and try it out properly. If anybody knows anyone at the DVLA, can you let me know who I need to bribe? I hope you found that interesting. Um, I was never going to do a van build series, although quite a few people said when they found out what I was up to that I should do that, but that's not what my channel's all about. Uh, anyway, one other thing that I've been up to over the last month or so is completely refurbishing my office space. Now, I used to be tucked over in the far corner back there. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. There's some old uh, sound deadening panels on the wall. What happened was that I used to have a pretty poor microphone and when I was working in here, it was really echoey. So I built a sound booth with a framework with material on it. Um, and then I got a much better microphone. I was too damn lazy to get rid of the sound booth. And anyway, so I've relocated myself. So I'm now sat in front of my window, which means during the day when I'm working, I've got a nice view instead of staring at the wall. Uh, what I've also been able to do as a result of that is set up all my video gear properly. Now, I always had a problem in the past with lighting. I was using little LED panels that caused all sorts of harsh reflections. Didn't like them at all. It was a nightmare. Um, but I never had room to set my studio lights up. So uh, these are the lights that I would use, as I mentioned earlier, doing some commercial work. Uh, but when I'm in the office, I now got room to set them up and light myself properly uh, so I don't have harsh reflections bouncing off the 
pictures behind me. Talking of which, you can see I've got another picture up here. That's the one that always used to be up, uh, but it always had light bouncing off it. So uh, I'm much happier with this setup. I've also uh, sorted myself out with a new video camera. So I'm talking to you on a Lumix G7, which I picked up off of MPB for just a shade over 200 quid. So for a 4K video camera, that's a snip. Now this microphone that uh, I've had for a while is the Rode uh, NTG5, a decent shotgun mic, uh, and it doubles up as my webcam microphone. So in the past, I had my Sony RX100 running into my laptop with separate audio, and that's how I used to do studio recording for YouTube. Um, whereas now I can run my microphone straight into that camera. And because the Rode has got two outputs, I don't have to do any rewiring when I want to do any recording. It's just going into two separate devices. So that's really handy. So I've got this G7 on a tripod the other side of the desk. So literally just switch it on and start talking. So that's really handy. And I've got my um, Lumix 9mm F17 on there. So hopefully quite a nice lens for this sort of thing. Another reason for wanting a proper setup like this is I am planning to do a whole series of um, video tutorials and courses uh, and I want to do more studio work um, for this channel because whilst I still will very much be out and about with a the camera there's lots of other genres and things that I have interest in um, and so I want to do things like processing techniques very specific to how I process, not broad how to use Lightroom or anything like that. Um, and inspirations, photographers and genres that I'm interested in. All of that sort of thing will feature on the channel. There may be, there's stuff that you're not interested in, so sorry about that. But um, you might find yourself dipping in and out of the channel a bit more because it is going to be a bit more varied because, you know, there's only so many times you can go up and down a mountain and take pictures up a mountain. Much as I enjoy that, uh, I just felt that it's time to freshen things up a little bit and I've got lots of ideas. So we'll see how that pans out. Um, so new office, new van. Um, ah, so the videos that are coming up, well, the first one that I'm going to be doing is a lens review. Venus Optics, very kindly, sent me this new Lauer uh, six millimeter f2 micro four thirds lens. Now this is the widest rectilinear lens you can get for micro four thirds. So it's a 12 millimeter full frame equivalent, which is pretty wide. Um, and they claim zero distortion. So, so far, actually, those claims are pretty solid. It, 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 I'm not going to go into any detail about it now, but that'll be the next video reviewing that because I've actually had it for about two or three months. So I owe them that review. Um, and then also, where did I put it? Wait there. VSGO sent me this 20 litre everyday backpack, they're calling it. They're kind of going up against Peak Design and Peter McKinnon, but for half the price. Um, as a story behind this, uh, shall I tell you now? No, I'll, I'll wait. I'll tell you it in the review video, but I wasn't going to review it. And I have an excuse as to why there'll be a couple of review videos coming up. But there is um, still plenty of photography and lots going on. I'm off down the beach right now to use this to shoot some rocks and solid foregrounds because that's pretty much what you use ultra wide angles for in landscapes. Um, I'm not reviewing this lens based on, you know, how well does it shoot interiors for estate agents or, um, you know, how well does it shoot architecture? Uh, we're down the beach with that. Um, I think that's about it for this video. It's gone on a lot longer than I thought it would. So apologies for all that. Thank you for sticking with me if you're still here. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, why not subscribe and join me next time? Cheers.